Good evening, and welcome to the Baggage Live Free Travel Light Friday Night Series here at Tabernacle SDA Church in Miami, Florida. Now, if you're joining us in person, we thank you for joining us tonight, and we pray that you are blessed by the message and the music that is presented. Um, and if you're joining us online, we pray for the same. Now, we have a bit of, uh, my name is Shad Henry, and I will be your host for tonight's Baggage series. Uh, and just to give you some background, this series was created uh, with topics that are relevant and are timely uh, to many of us. Uh, more or less, it, it will focus on some of the baggage that we carry from one season to our life to the next, and how that baggage oftentimes weighs us down and keeps us from living our best lives and being happy and spirit-filled. Please join me in prayer. Father God in heaven, we want to thank you for allowing us to be here tonight. We want to thank you for blessing us with the inspiration to create this Friday night series. Father, I pray that those that may be watching online and those that are here in person are blessed and are uh, provided with, with messaging and, and uh, inspiration to change their lives. Father, I pray that as we proceed throughout the next few weeks with this series that uh, we are able to uh, affect positive change on the lives of those who are in our midst and those who are online. Again, Father, we pray that you bless the proceedings and that you continue to keep us safe. In your holy son, Jesus' name, amen. Now, just so you know that each night after our series, we will have prayer rooms available. We're going to have a, a physical prayer room here in the church, and we will have an online prayer room for those of you who may be joining us online. It will be our normal Wednesday night service, um, Ring Central Room. So if you feel that you need prayer, if you need intercessory prayer, uh, any additional support, uh, and if you're in the building, we will provide instructions for you later on. And we will have mental health counselors available. So if there's something uh, that is said or something that is preached that um, requires that for you to speak to a mental health professional, we will have those services available. In addition, um, we want you to know that each night we will have a quiz, all right? And the quiz will come at the conclusion of the service, all right? We set up a website, actually. It's uh, www.tabsda.org slash baggage and on that page you'll find a number of resources to help uh, as you go along this journey with us you'll find inspirational videos we have uh, scriptures we have our pastor's prayer book we have a guest book so if you invite individuals you can have them fill out that guest book and we will be giving away gifts throughout this series and they're going to be very nice gifts trust me you're going to you're going to really like the gifts that we give. Uh, in addition, like I said, we have a digital guest book, and that can be found on our baggage page. And you can also get this information by texting the word guest, the word guest to 855-997-1170. So each night we will give away prizes uh, to our, for our challenges, because we're going to have a challenge, and we're going to have a quiz, and we will be giving away gifts. All right, and to be eligible, you got to tune in. You have to tune in, and you have to participate, all right? Also, if you feel so inclined, we will accept any financial contributions that you like to provide so that we can continue to put on programs of this nature. Uh, and you can do so through the various methods, uh, methods that we have. You can do so through Cash App, or you can do so through the Advent Adventist Giving app. All right, at this time, we will be blessed with our theme song, God Kept Me. Good evening, Tabernacle. Let go. I 
felt like I just couldn't take life anymore. My problems had me bound. Depression weighed me down, but God held me close so I wouldn't let go. God's mercy kept me so I wouldn't let go. I almost gave up. I was right at the edge of a breakthrough but couldn't see it. The devil really had me, but Jesus came and grabbed me and he held me close so I wouldn't let go. God's mercy kept me so I wouldn't let go. So I'm alive today because God kept me. And I'm here because, only because of His grace. Oh, He kept me. God kept me. me so I would let go amen that's gonna be the theme song of God holding us and us not letting go amen Thank you very much, Linda, for that beautiful song. As she said, that will be our theme song every night. If you know the song, feel free to sing it. Uh, it's a very inspirational song. God kept me. Amen? All right, so at this time, I just want to give you some background information on the theme or the topic for tonight. All right, the topic is unforgiveness. All right, the baggage of unforgiveness. Now, how many of us have ever been slighted in our lives and and we found it hard to let go of the anger that we feel I see people are being honest and doing and holding their hands up now that's something I can relate to as well uh, many of us have encountered individuals in our lives who have uh, done us wrong as we say and it's been very hard for us to just let that go um, and if you were to really think about it you'll know that that is baggage that is something that weighs you down because a lot of times we think we're hurting others by holding on to that, but in the end, we're really hurting ourselves because it's preventing us from moving forward. It's, pre it's preventing us from being happy, and it's really giving them power and authority over us. Um, so Pastor Dotton is going to bring us a powerful message tonight on that topic, unforgiveness, letting that go, and being able to move forward in a life of fullness, in a life of joy, uh, in a life of happiness. So... Uh, before he comes tonight, uh, Linda will bless us with another song, and then we'll hear from our pastor, Pastor Dutton, on the topic of unforgiveness. Church family, the song is Adonai, because God, that is who he is. One single drop of rain, your salty tears became blue ocean. One tiny grain of sand, turning in your hands the world in motion. You're out beyond the furthest morning star. But close enough to hold me in your arms at night. I lift up my heart and I cry. My Adonai, your maker of each moment 
and father of my hope and freedom oh my Adonai one timid faithful knock resounds upon the rock of ages one trembling heart and soul becomes a servant bold and courageous you call across the mountains and the sea i answer from the deepest Part of me at night, I lift up my heart and I cry. My at night, you're maker of each moment and father of my hope and freedom. But today you're making miracles in me at night. I live. And father of my hope and freedom, oh my Adonai. Thank you, Lord. Are we glad he's our Adonai? Good evening, everyone. I'll say it again. Good evening, everyone. I want to welcome you this evening as we begin this series called Baggage, called Baggage. And so um, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to be here uh, this evening. Um, thank you so much to our personal ministry team for coordinating uh, this special uh, service for the next eight weeks. The next eight weeks, we will continue on this series called Baggage. And I pray that each and every one of you who are here will invite your friends, neighbors, coworkers, and even your enemies if you have any. And at the end of this series, your enemies will be your friends. Amen. Can someone say amen? Also, as we continue, as we continue, um, I'm going to ask you to do something very important, very special. Um, for those who will invite the most individuals to be part of this service, whether you are online or whether you are in person, we will have a special gift just for you. Now, I'm going out on a limb to say that. We'll have a special gift just for you. Am I right? Elder Henry, am I right? All right. He said, yes, that means you're going to have a special gift uh, just for you. Now, um, I must let you know, it, back in the days, we used to give out little booklets. Remember that? Unless you are wanting a booklet, we're going to give an even bigger gift than this, the booklet. Uh, so for those listening online, those of you who harassed me last year uh, during the Faith Over Fear series, wanting a t-shirt, hopefully this year, you will be able to get one of those t-shirts. Now I'm going out on a limb again and saying that Elder Henry, he puts his thumbs up. That means you will get a t-shirt uh, along with a special gift. Can someone say amen? You can put your hand up and just wave it if you would like a t-shirt. Even if you're at home, put it in the chat. Let us know that you would like a t-shirt. It's not coming free, folks. You've got to invite someone. 
You've got to take someone into the series, a whole family, if you may, to be able to be with you. Now, you're wondering, how am I going to know this if you're online? We will know based on what you tell us. It's an accountability thing that you would have. You've got to let us know how many people you have brought to the series, and we will give you a gift. So please take note of that. Now, I hope you don't get upset, but I'm going to get into your business every single time we meet. Okay, I'll say it again. Even if you get upset, it's all right, because you can be upset at me, but God is speaking through me. And so I must let you know I'm going to get in your business. I'm going to disturb your mind, because guess what? If you have baggage and you've been holding on to the baggage, we need to, to be able to be light. Amen? We need to be light. And the truth is that that when we carry all of these baggages, there are problems that are associated with it. So we're going to explore that tonight with the first topic, talking about unforgiveness. So without any further ado, I'm going to invite you to turn in the Bible with me. Turn to Matthew, Matthew chapter 18, Matthew chapter 18, and we're going to begin at verse 21. Matthew chapter 18 and verse 21. The Bible says, Then Peter came to him, And said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? Up to seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to seventy times seven. Can someone say seventy times seven? I hear you now. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And he had begun to settle accounts. One was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. But as he was not able to pay, his master commanded that he be sold with his wife and children and all that he had, and that payment be made. The servant therefore fell down before him, saying, Master, have patience on me, or with me, and I will pay you all. Then the master of that servant was moved with compassion, released him, and forgave him his debt. But that servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you all. And he would not, but he went and threw him into prison till he should pay the debt. So went his fellow servants, when his fellow servants saw what he had, what he had, what he had been done, what had been done, they were very grieved and came and told their master all that had been done. Then the master, after he had called him, said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all the debt because you begged me. Should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant, just as I had pity on you? And his master was angry and delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all that was due to him. So my heavenly Father also will do to you if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespass or his trespasses. For the next little while, we'll speak on this topic on forgiveness. Can we pray together? Father in heaven, Lord, speak to us tonight. Here we are in your house once again, those online also, O God. We ask that each and every one of us would hear your word, and we will not harden our heart, but we'll be able to forgive tonight, O God, and always, knowing fully well that you are the one who is living in us and giving us the strength. So bless us tonight. Keep us, O God, and speak to our hearts and use this piece of clay once again. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I must be honest with each and every one of you. I've got baggage in my life. And if you're honest too, you would realize that you have baggage also. Am I speaking truth tonight? Now, 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 each and every one of us, each and every one of us carry things in our lives. When I talk about baggage, each and every one of us carry things in our lives that we wish could have been forgotten, wish we could throw away completely. Each and every one of us carry things that we would hope that we can get rid of. 
Now, now, just a little while ago, in fact, just about a week or so ago, my family and I traveled to Toronto, Canada. And as we were traveling to Toronto, Canada, I noticed something. I noticed something. And, and I noticed that individuals now no longer travel as heavy as they used to. If you've been on a plane lately, you probably would notice the same thing. Am I right or wrong? You would notice that individuals would carry just a carry-on and a backpack or another bag in their hand, and they will get on the flight, and they would not be, be held back because there are long lines right now. Am I right or wrong? If you've been on a plane lately, you will see that individuals try to cram every little piece of goods that they can into a little bag just so that they can get on the plane. They can get on and they can get off at a relatively fast time. And I know if you're like me, then, then you probably do the same. But as I was traveling, I realized some things. I encountered some challenges. Can I be honest with you? There are some challenges that some of us encounter when we travel with a lot of baggage. Because, because before, I was one of those that were also guilty of traveling very heavy. Maybe you were too. Because we didn't have to pay for our bags. And like you and like me, we are looking out for our finances. Am I right? I mean, you don't want to be paying an arm and a leg just to be able to get on an airplane. So, so I decided that we were going to scale back. I was not going to travel with five bags anymore. I know I'm not only the one that's guilty because some ladies used to travel with just a bag for their hats, a bag for their shoes, a bag for their, 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 their dresses, and a bag for, you know, the other stuff. But now we have changed. Now things have changed. So we are now scaling back because we don't want to carry all of that stuff anymore. I'm going somewhere today. So when I got to the airport and I had my little bag and a bag pack, I encountered some challenges with one of the, the, the airline hostesses. Or, or, or they, were, they were there checking us, checking us in. I didn't even have to go to them. I tried to avoid them at every cost. I go right to the counter just like you, and I type in my information, but it wasn't reading properly, so I had to go to the desk. I, I, I didn't want to go to the desk just like you. I hope you're still with me. But I went to the desk nonetheless. Nonetheless, I went to the desk. She took my information. She took my children's information. She took my wife's information. She scanned it, and then she said, look, I need to weigh your bags. I said, look, we're not checking in anything. We're just carrying our stuff. She said, oh, all right, I thought you were checking in because it looked like it needs to be a checked bag. I said, ma'am, I don't longer travel heavy. I travel light. She said, but there is just one thing. I want, since your bag looks like it's a little bit larger, I want for you to check it by sticking it into that thing over there to make sure that it's the right carry-on size. Now, now, after a while, I looked at her, and I was kind of like getting frustrated. Not like I was getting frustrated. I was getting frustrated because this lady was telling me I need to place my bags into this thing to, to, to see. I mean, my bag is not heavy because I travel light. There is a reason why I'm carrying my bag, this little bag, so it doesn't need to be checked in. And, and, and Sister Carrington, I was getting frustrated at her, but I did what I was told. I took my bag and I stuck it into the thing, pulled it right out, and I said, you see? She said, but here's the thing, I want you to put all of them in there. Now, 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 I was really losing it now because I said they're all the same size, ma'am. She said, just do it. I was really getting frustrated now. I thought I was on spirit for a second. I don't mean to, to demean any airline companies, but, but you know that some companies are not the same as others. So I looked at just to check to make sure what, what airline I was traveling with. And when I, when I did, I went and I put the second one, which was the same size and the same make and model as the first one. I said, do you see? She said, I need for you to put the other one. So I went ahead and put each and every one of them in. I said, nothing is going to deter me from getting on the flight now. I'm not going to lose it. I'm not going to be one of those who will be thrown out for being an angry black man. So I went ahead. I did what I was told. I took it all out. And I put them, put them on the side, and I said, you see, they're all carry-ons. And I gave them all and I, to, 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 to my children, and, and they looked at me, and for their sake, I was not going to lose it. I know that, that for their sake, I've got to keep my composure, even though she was getting on my last nerve. Now, now, for many of us, many of us, we carry baggages. We carry baggages. There are some things that gets on our last nerve. There are some people that gets on our last nerve. Remember, I'm still here talking about unforgiveness, right? 
So here I am in this situation carrying my little bag and I'm being, being pestered. I'm being aggravated because of somebody who got in my way. And for many of us, many of us, we have been plagued by individuals, whether in the church and out of the church, because of certain things that they view as being one way or the other. I don't want to get into all of that stuff. But there are some people who just by one look at us, they don't like us. Okay, you're getting real quiet now. There are some individuals who will get on your last nerve. They will test you to the limit. Whether you're in the church or out of the church, they will poke and prod you in many different places that will get you into a place where you're like, "Mm mm-mm, you have crossed the line. But because, because of the blood of Jesus, sometimes we have to clamp down on our lips so that we don't lose our minds. So here, there is a parable that is presented to us. Many of us carry baggages. And there is a parable that is presented to us by Jesus now going to, to, to Peter. Peter actually comes to Jesus and Peter says, uh, Jesus, understanding that I know what church I'm in, I know the problems that are, are existing within the church, I know how people can get, there is something that really gets under my skin. How many times do I have to forgive somebody? Have we asked that question? How many times do I have to go and, and, and ask forgiveness or go and forgive somebody after they have wronged me? And be sure, there are people who get on our last nerve. They have wronged us in many different ways. There are people who have done some atrocious things to us, and we carry those weight for a long time. Can I loosen my tie here tonight? Because there are some things, there are some things, there are some things that people do to us or they say to us that doesn't just leave us just like that. And Jesus' response to to Peter just doesn't even seem to make sense because, after all, we're carrying all this stuff all these years. We can remember what sister so-and-so said to us and did to us in 1992. We can remember what that person did in our household. We can remember what that person said. We can remember what they wore. We can remember how they tilted their hat. When they were in school, we can remember the exact wording. And sometimes those individuals live their life without even paying us any mind. And here we are, plagued with this baggage of unforgiveness. Yeah, we're talking about it tonight. So Peter went and said, Jesus, how many times should I forgive my brother? And Jesus said, uh, uh, well, Peter said, oh, seven times? Why does he say seven times? Because the Jews had it that if you were, if someone wronged you, then they would have it once or twice. Three times was enough, and then you're done with them. So Peter more than doubled that. He said, oh, seven times? That means it was more than what the Jews even required. And Jesus shocks him. Jesus says, oh, you think it's only seven times you're going to forgive some people? And guess what? For many of us, after the third time, we've had it with some people. After the first time, we've had it with some too, if the truth be told. And in fact, some of us live by that saying, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, or did I say it right? Yeah, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Oh, you guys know it. You are sharp. You are sharp. You guys, even back home, I could even hear you at home on your chair. I could hear you repeating that thing because you know it. So by the third time, you're like, "Mm -mm, double shame on me. You're not going to fool me a third time. Absolutely not. Many of us actually have it in relationships like that. Your husband, you're like, "Mm mm-mm. It's time for that papers to be written out. Oh, I'm going in your business tonight. I'm going in your business tonight. You don't want me to come into your, into your house now. But the truth is that many of us, our relationships are crumbling because we can't even forgive. Okay, I step on some toes. Let me move on. Jesus said, Jesus said, not only seven times, but 70 times seven. Now, if the mathematicians in here, how much, how much is that? 490 times. I want, to see, I want to see the person in here who's next to being translated right now who has forgiven somebody 490 times. Oh, no one is a taker. No one is ready for translation. Because the truth is that after the first or second time, we're done with them. We're ready to cut them off. We have called their name mud. We have, we have stricken them from the book. We have crossed them off. We have blocked them. We have blocked them from every social media site because we don't want anything to do with that person. Why? Because they have crossed the line after the first time. 490 times? 
Some individuals get even rude. They're like, "Mm -mm, I turned the other cheek too many times. Jesus says 490 times. Now, now that is not an exact figure. It's not for us to go and calculate, well, I, I forgave that rascal 296, 298, and you're counting to figure out exactly how many times you forgave that person. Jesus is giving this number to show that it can't be calculated. So no matter how many times someone has done us wrong, we need to forgive them. Now, that's very hard because because many times, many times in our lives, we don't want to forgive anybody. In fact, if the truth be told, there are some people who don't even deserve forgiveness. Am I right or wrong? The atrocities that they have done in this life to think about even forgiving them, my gosh, I mean, I I read some stories here that just happened this week in Miami, and I'm saying, how is the person going to even get to the point where they can forgive that person? We don't want to forgive anybody, if the truth be told. But, but, But here, I took some time out. I took some time out to write down what forgiveness is not. Can I just go through this list real quick? What forgiveness is not. Because for, for many of us, when we hear the word forgiveness, we're thinking, man, after what they have done, done to me, you expect for me just to forgive them like that, Jesus? You expect for me just to write off all the wrongs that they have done just like that? Well, what forgiveness is not? Forgiveness, first off, is not approval of what they did to you. Can I say that again? Forgiveness is not approval of what they did to you. So when you you say, I forgive somebody, it's not saying, okay, I put a stamp to agree that everything they did, everything they said, all the atrocities and the, the hardship that they put me through, then that's okay. That is not forgiveness. What else is not forgiveness? Forgiveness is not excusing what they did. All right, you're real quiet now. Because, because for oftentimes, when we come to church, we hear, oh, this person has done this to that person, and, and they have abused that person, but yet we should forgive. And, and so individuals believe that because I forgave somebody, like, like let me give you an instance. There was, there was, it was a, a, a father who abused his daughter. You with me, right? I know it's, I know it's a, a hard thing. He abused his daughter sexually. And then later on, when his daughter said, okay, I forgave him for all the atrocities he has done, and she accepted Jesus Christ, and she she forgave her dad for all the wrongs he had done in her life. Then later on, she has a little girl. Should she then take her little girl and give it to, give her, let her grandfather now take care of her? Oh, you're shaking your head because you know exactly the answer to that. My friends, you can't, you have to be wise as a serpent and harmless as dove. It's not excusing what they did, but don't be a doormat. It's not excusing what they did. It's not approval of what they did. It is also not justifying what they did. Oh, they had a reason to do it. Oh, they must have been going through a stressful time. Oh, they must have been going through a hard time on the job. There is no excuse for someone to be hard against you. There is no excuse for them to to use their their, their mouth as, as venom to destroy you. There is no excuse for them to emotionally abuse you. There is no excuse for physical abuse. And there is no way that you can justify it. If they're wrong, they're wrong. And let me say this, God is not saying get over it. Because many individuals, when they hear about forgiveness, and they're trying to justify it by saying, oh, you see, you got to forgive, you must forgive, so therefore you must get over it. Can you really get over something when someone has really done you wrong? Now, 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 let me stay here for a moment because the only way that you can get through it or get over something, as some individuals say, is through the Holy Spirit. Let me, let me share this with you, and this is, going, this is going real, real deep right now. I'm sharing with you from my heart. I had an issue with my own father. Oh, you got real quiet. You want to know the business. I had an issue with my own father, and for years, I held him up. For years, I was hurt. I was, I, was, I was angry. If I saw him, I probably would have punched him in the face. Oh, you, you shocked. No, it's the truth. And many of us, we don't want to come to grips with our true emotions. When someone has done something wrong or we feel that they have done something uh, uh, just, just, just sinister against us, we will do all manner of stuff because we want to get even. 
And God had to help me to, to go through these challenging times to the point where I could even stomach him. And for many of you right now, in the same way there are individuals even in our own lives that we're trying to see how we can stomach them. And lo and behold, God forbid, that it's someone even in your own household. I'll get back to that. Forgiveness is not reconciliation. Okay, okay, okay. Many individuals in church, and I've heard even elders say this many times, Oh, well, you have to forgive and forget. Don't take individuals to court. Don't send individuals to prison for what they did. All that different stuff. Oh, you need to reconcile. Too many times, okay, let me come. Help me, Holy Spirit. Look, too many times I've been to homes trying to separate husbands and wives from killing each other. I remember many, many times, many, many times, even when, when we were younger in ministry, my wife and I would get a call at 3 a.m. in the morning, and we would leave our house, and we would take off going to a family dispute. Sometimes I regret it now because I think, man, what were we doing? That was a call for the police, not the pastor. And one of those instances, I'm grabbing the knife, and my wife is grabbing the pot. And I think back at all of those moments, and I'm saying, man, and, and, and when they went and sat down, and I was, I was an assistant pastor at, at some churches too, and I've heard the senior pastor in that time telling some of these same couples, oh, you need to reconcile. Oh, that's your husband, that's your wife. I'm like, no, that's domestic violence. Somebody needs to go to jail. I know you don't want to hear all of this, but the truth is that as I've gone I've gotten older in ministry, I've realized that in some cases, we don't, need, we don't need reconciliation. In some cases, you need to be separated because God didn't really bring your union together in the first place. You tried to make things work. You tried to squeeze it in and pack it in. Or because somebody was pregnant, you try to see how you can do it because their daddy or their mommy told you you had to do it. And at the end of the day, God is like, I didn't want this. And you know you shouldn't have been in that. And God is trying every which way to see how, look, you can't get re reconciliation in this situation. It's a toxic environment. Oh, I know you didn't come for this, right? I'm getting in your house right now. Sometimes the pain is so deep, you can't get back the same relationship. No matter how much you try, there is no reconciliation. I'm sorry if you have to hear these words, but the truth is that in some cases, you can't reconcile. You can't act like it never happened. Now, it doesn't mean that reconciliation is not possible. Anything is possible if we don't harden our heart. But the truth is, in some cases, reconciliation should not even be an option. Because if you get back into that household, you will kill each other. Forgiveness is also not denying what they did. I told you it's not reconciliation, it's not justifying, it's also not denying what they did. For some individuals, based on what they've done to you, they need to go to prison. And countless individuals who need to go to prison have hidden themselves as if they're sheep in the church. Lastly, lastly, for forgiveness is not automatically forgetting. Let me say it again. Forgiveness is not automatically forgetting. We are not wired that way. Maybe you're wired that way, but I'm certainly not. When someone has done something to us, our mind, there is something that triggers that this person has done me wrong. When I, when I see them walking in the church, something is triggered in my mind and probably in your mind that that person is, is not good. Am I the only one? We're just not wired that way. When someone does something wrong to us, there is something inside of us that says, mm -mm, it's either fight or flight. And our bodies are just wired that way. So, so what are we talking about when Jesus is saying we need to forgive? We need to forgive. What is Jesus talking about? 
Well, what Jesus is mentioning is that forgiveness has got to be a concerted effort, a choice that we're making to actually let the person off the hook. All right, let me say it again a different way. It is us choosing to let the person go even though we know for sure that they're guilty. And over time, over time, God can erase it. Over time, when individuals tell you, oh, just forget it. Well, we're not really wired that way. Every time you see them, it becomes kind of, kind of, a, kind of a heightened moment. But over time, as you present that matter before God, God helps you to the point where you, you can see that person, you can sit in the same room with them, and you don't actually hate them. Has anyone been through that? Wait, where over time, you know, okay, let me, let me share with you. For those who have never been through it, I had a good friend, and he borrowed some money from me. And I've learned over time, I've learned over time not to let somebody borrow more than what you're, you're willing to let them just keep. Don't let people borrow money if you're, not, if, you're, if you're not willing to lose it. I've learned that. So that's a premise that you need to keep in, in, in your pocket. You need to put it in your wallet. When people ask you to co-sign, don't co-sign for anybody. Come back and t if you're going to give them $3,000, $5,000, just count it as a loss. If they pay it back, they pay it back. If they don't, they don't. So I let my friend borrow some money. I'm not going to tell you the exact figure because I don't want you to calculate it and think that I'm wealthy. But I trusted him, and I let him borrow all that money. And before long, my friend gave me back $100, and I thought, okay, he's on the road to recovery. He's going to pay me back that money, that thousands that I gave him. I just said thousands, right? And I realized over time the calls became less and the money became less. And I realized that, 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 that wait a minute, my, my friend, now the relationship is, is, is gone. He's not calling me. When I try to call, there is just the answering machine over and over again. Sometimes the call just goes on and on. And I know definitely he's there because he's always on. If I try to reach out to him on social media, there is no response. And that's when you know for sure it's a lost cause. So one day I went to his house. Yeah, you got to do that. Showed up and said, look, what's going on? Said he gave me a whole long excuse why, why, you know, work situation, all that other stuff. And I'm saying, man, like, I miss our friendship. I miss the times that we, 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 we used to hang out. Like, seriously, I know it's money, I mean, but I'm willing to just write it off so that we can move on in life. I, I don't, I, but the relationship still changed because he had it over his head that I, I still didn't, 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 you know, want to just let it go. And I'm like, man, I let it go. I just want our friendship because I really miss just talking with you, having that rapport. I didn't care for the money anymore. But all he could see is that he owed a debt. And over time, our relationship just, just got more distant because he couldn't get over the money that he owed. Individuals will change on you. But over time, forgiveness is not automatically forgetting. For me, I could still go into a restaurant and still we sit down with our, my friend and we can still have a wonderful dinner because it's no longer about the money. It's now just about that friendship. God can erase that stuff. No matter what someone has done to you, even if it's not money, maybe they have even abused you, maybe they have done wrong to you, maybe emotionally they have, they have created an environment that was toxic. But if, if, if you place it in the hands of Jesus, he's able to fix it. He's able to allow for you over time to be able to see that person face to face and know that you don't have any animosity towards them. So then I began to ask the question, what in the world does forgiveness look like? And was it for? And I'm coming down to the end now. I'm coming down to the end. What in the world is forgiveness for? Or who is it for? When we choose to forgive, it's not for the other person. You know that, right? It, it's for us. Because that individual, that individual could be going along their merry way, enjoying their life, and we're the one that's, that's, that's being eaten up inside. And that's why the Bible says a broken spirit does what? Dries the what? The bones. Because when you're there thinking about all they have done to you, what they have wronged you, how, what they have said, what they have done, over time that only diminishes your own health. 
It is you that's being affected. Now, remember, I just started by telling you about carrying the bags into the airport. The reason why many individuals have changed their model of, of actually traveling and they have now downsized to travel light. You know why? Because their pockets were hit. When they realized that financially, their, their, their pockets was, was draining money because every time they were flying, they had to pay for these extra bags, people changed the way that they were going. And I began to say, man, if we were only supposed to look at our own health and, and forgiveness in that same way, when we have unforgiveness in our heart, it diminishes our own health. And we were to take stock in the same way that we will, we will guard our pockets by going to the airport because we're carrying this baggage. Then why in the world would we now not lose some of the baggage of unforgiveness that we're carrying by traveling lighter? In fact, the Mayo Clinic actually did an entire research project on that and saw that when people have unforgiveness in their heart, their health is affected. In fact, their, their blood pressure goes up. They have more stress and depression and all these things in their life. And they're wondering, God, how did this happen to me? Well, maybe you should try forgiving. Travel lighter. And you'll realize that the baggage that we're carrying is going to be much easier to manage. Forgiveness is for us. Forgiveness, like I shared with you, is knowing what they did but choosing to forgive. It's also, it's also refusing to punish the person. Okay, let me say it again. Forgiveness is refusing to punish the person. Many times, many times, when individuals have done wrong to us, we come back and we say, oh, you just wait and see. I can't wait to get you in a position. I can't wait to get you in that part where I'm going to take care of you. I can't wait to show you. I remember, I remember, uh, 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 there are some teachers who always looked at some kids in the school as being amounting to nothing. And when those kids, some of them, I heard their passion, and some of them, were their, their drive was that I'll show her, I'll show him. That was their whole drive. They wanted to, to prove to them that what they had said and projected on them is never going to be a reality. And when they get to that point, they would be in retirement, and hopefully they'll be the one to write their check. My friends, forgiveness is not about punishing somebody else or wishing bad on the person. Some individuals, when someone does something to them, the first thing they say, I wish they get hurt in a car accident. I wish they get cancer. I wish bad on their children and their children's children. My friends, that's not the attitude that Christ wants us to have. It's one where we'll be able to truly say, in spite of what wrong the person has done to us, that we're still willing to say, look, I pray that God blesses you. Because guess what? The Bible admonishes us that when we, when we, when we, we wish good on those who are our enemies, it's like heaping hot coals upon them. What does that mean? It means, it means that when they wouldn't even understand it. Because at the end of the day, what they're going to see is that when they wish bad on you, that you will continue to thrive because you are God's child. Forgiveness is being merciful. It's not bent on getting them back, waiting for that opportunity. But also, also, forgiveness takes place in the heart. Forgiveness takes place in the heart. We can't forgive someone by ourselves. I mean, look at this parable that Jesus painted. And as we begin to wind down tonight, this parable that Jesus paints is the epitome of forgiveness. Jesus paints this parable to Peter who was asking, how many times should I forgive this person who has done me wrong? And Jesus says, look, there was a, 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 a servant who owed, who owed uh, 1,000 talents. 1,000 talents, the equivalent, the equivalent of $12 million, $12 million. And, and, and when he went to settle that account as, as the, the, the master or the, the king is looking through to settle all of his, his accounts, 
uh, 10,000 talents is what he's supposed to settle. The equivalent of, of 12 million, he realized that this servant could not pay it. In fact, he was crying out for mercy. 10,000 talents. And yet when he could not pay, he, he cried out to the king and said, King, have mercy upon me. I can't pay this. Have mercy. Don't, don't, don't sell my family because that was part of the deal. When, when someone owed, it was not like foreclosure today. They would just take their family and sell them into slavery until they can pay the debt. This man will take years for generations, actually, to be able to settle that debt. And the king looks at him and the king says to him, look. I know you can't pay the debt, but I'm having mercy upon you. It's just too much for you to pay. So the king, after he, he, he frees him, he allows for him to go, and he says, look, I'm freeing you, but not only am I freeing you, you don't have to pay back anything. This man leaves the king, and he goes down the street, and while he's down the street, he meets the other servant who owes him 100 denarii, the equivalent of a few hundred dollars, and he holds him in his throat. And he says, look, pay me my money. And the man says, look, have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me. The same words that he uses in, in front of the king is the same words that this servant uses for him. And he turns to the man and he says, uh-uh, you're going to have to pay up. And he sends this, this servant to jail. And the man is in jail, and the rest of the servants who hears about this, this incident now goes back to the king and tells the king what has happened. And the king says, oh my goodness, I can't believe he would do something like this. And he calls him in and he says, you wicked servant. You wicked servant, how could you do this to your fellow brother? Because of that, all that I have forgiven you, you will now be required to pay. And he sends him into the prison instead. And he now is tortured day and day in and day in because now he has to pay this great debt of 12 million, the equivalent of 12 million dollars that he can't afford. Then Jesus, after giving this parable, says, look, this king is a representative of God himself. Because we who are like that servant, we need to offer forgiveness just like he had offered to the first man. We can't hold people to, to being, being, being unforgiven and being to pay for the wrongs that they have done when we too are also guilty of a greater debt. The truth is, if we were to look back out of our own lives, we would see that we have done a whole lot to others also. We have done a whole lot to God himself. And every single time, God says, look, I have forgiven you, and I throw your sin in the depth, your sins in the depth of the sea. And, and, and my friends, I went, when I went to Toronto, I looked at, the, at how deep the ocean is, and it's Mariana's Trench. It is so deep that you can fit so many of the tallest buildings and, and deeper than the height of Mount Everest. And I'm saying, my Lord, no one has ever gone down there. No one has ever gone to the bottom. And that just reminds each and every one of us that, that when, when God looks at our sin and we go to him and ask forgiveness, that he's willing, he's faithful to cast our sins in the depths of the ocean. No matter what we have gone through in this life, if God can offer us forgiveness, how can we now be unforgiving towards our brethren? How can we be unforgiving towards our family members and our co-workers? And our friends. That's why Jesus says we need to turn the other cheek. We need to forgive individuals 490 times at least. And when we do that, we will see a change in our lives completely. For many of us, we like to hold on to baggage. We like to hold on to it. And for years... I, too, held on to a whole lot of stuff. But one thing God had to teach me is that in order for me to be free, I have to go through a purging process. And for many of us, this series is going to be a purging process. We have to purge some of those feelings that we have towards others. At every move, do you know what God did to us? When we were moving from Canada to the United States, 
We had made our entire life. We had how many bedroom house? I don't want to tell you. All that stuff all laid out. We had how many couches? All that other furniture. And, and, and God took us and scaled it back so much that we only had our bags on our backs. In order for God to use us and to work through us, we have to go through a process of purging. And what God allowed for us to see is that a lot of the stuff that we store up that we count as valuable is actually garbage. Okay, let me say it again. A lot of the stuff that we actually store up and count as being valuable, somebody else, after we die, is going to cast it in the trash. We think that everything we have is so important, but God has to take us on a trip. We've got to put it in three categories. Either we're going to toss it, we're going to keep it, or we're going to give it away. One of those gentlemen I met years ago, years ago, um, was, on, was on one of those shows, um, Good Morning Uncle Charlie. Does anyone remember that? Okay, you, you don't want to tell your age. It's okay. They used to have a radio program, and the kids used to sit next to it and say, Good morning, Uncle Charlie. Anyone remember that? Am I the only one? Oh, my goodness. I see some hands. I see some hands. And I went to that man's house because he was selling some books. And he said, look, I want to tell you something. I sat down with him and he said, I want to remind you of something. In this life, there is a time to gather and there is a time to scatter. And I looked at him strange. I said, I heard you on the story time for many years. What in the world are you talking about? He says, look. Many individuals try to hold on to things in their life, and they will accumulate and gather all manner of stuff, and they will get to a point in their life where they got to realize that all those things are not even valuable. And what they will have to do is to purge those items, give it away, toss it, or, or, or decide what is really important to keep. And I'm sharing this with you tonight because each and every one of us at different times, different moments in our life will have to either gather or scatter. And this is the moment where God is reminding us of what is really, truly important in our lives. Some of us hold on to pain. We hold on to grief. We hold on to, 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 to anger. We hold on to all manner of stuff. And we think that those things are going to help us to some degree. We cherish those things. And God is bringing it into our face in this series saying, look, those things are not important. What's important is for you to have that relationship with God and a relationship with those around you who are important. Your family, your friends, individuals in your circle, individuals in your church, those co-workers of yours that you think are rascals, those individuals God has brought in your life for a purpose. You can't just ignore it and push it aside as if they don't exist. Individuals are there and they are important. God is bringing us on a journey and he will have to purge some things out of our life so that we will be closer to where he wants us to be. And I pray that as we continue in this series, that some things will be purged out of our lives. Some people will be purged out of our lives. Some things and habits that we were accustomed to will be purged out of our lives. Because until we are able to purge, we won't be the one that God wants us to be, the person that God wants us to be. So tonight, I'm going to ask you to make a decision tonight that you will journey with us. And as we journey in this series of baggage, that you'll be open to letting go of some of the things that hold us back. If you are in agreement with that, would you raise your hands with me? You're in agreement to let go of some of those things that's been holding us back. Whether it's malice, whether it's grief, whether it's pain, whether it's anguish, whether it's, it's depression, whatever it is that's been holding us back, we're going to purge it. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, those things have got to leave because there's no place in our lives. On that note, tonight, I'm going to ask if you can bow your heads with me as we pray, as we close this time this evening. Father in heaven, Lord, we come to you once again. Lord, many of us have many different challenges in our lives, and one of the challenges is that of unforgiveness. Lord, tonight, we need your power. We need your strength. 
to be able to overcome. There are individuals that have hurt us. There's pain that we're carrying. There's anger that we're carrying. There's bitterness that we're carrying for many years. And we ask, oh God, that you will give us the freedom. Allow for us to leave here tonight feeling light, knowing that all these baggages that we carry will put it to you and you will take care of it. So we thank you and we love you. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Don, for that powerful message. I pray that you all were blessed and that uh, you got a taste of what we will be experiencing over the next little while. I just wanted to point out a few things and, and get some response from you. What were some of the things that pastors say forgiveness is not? What is forgiveness? Uh, when you forgive somebody, what is it not? All right, it's not reconciliation. That doesn't necessarily mean that you reconcile with the person when you forgive them. All right, what else? It's not accepting whatever they did to you. It's not telling them that, okay, I'm, I'm okay with what you did to me. What else is it not? It's not justifying it, all right? It's not forgetting, all right? Because we as human beings, and I love the analogy you gave, you can't be unwise, all right? You can't put yourself back in that position where you could be hurt again, all right? So forgiving doesn't mean that we have to be fools about it, all right? So what is forgiveness? What are some of the things he said forgiveness is? All right, showing mercy, all right? Anything else? Refusing to punish or wish ill on that person, all right? So that's, that's a very heavy topic, and like Pastor said, all of us, if we're honest with ourselves, we have that baggage of unforgiveness. There's something someone has done to us, and, and we, we, we've just been holding on to it either consciously or sometimes un unconsciously. We've been holding on to stuff. Uh, and with that in mind, each week, uh, we will be challenging you to put into action what we hear tonight because it doesn't make sense for us to just come here and go, all right? We have to actually put into action and use it to make ourselves better. So the challenge for this week would be for you, each of you, the challenge is for you to let at least one person know, no, no, just one person know, uh, someone that has done you wrong, let them know that you forgive them. Very simple, all right? Somebody that has done you wrong, you've been holding on to it. And like Pastor said, a lot of times they don't even know that you're holding on to that. They're going about, they're skipping every week, every day, living their lives, happy as could be, free as a bird, while we are being saddled with this, this pain. And every time we see him, we, I can't stand you. All right, so the challenge is for you to think of that person. And for some of us, I already know who I'm going to I'm, I'm have to forgive, all right? It, it comes easy for us because that's that one person that, ah, I can't stand that person. All right, so the challenge is for you to, to call that person, whatever, not put yourself in a position where you could be hurt, but if you feel inclined to, let them know, I forgive you. And that's it. And, and, and if you feel bold enough, uh, next week you can share that testimony here for the second week of our series. Amen? That's the first challenge. The second challenge is for you to invite at least two people to either tune in next week or come in person. Okay? All right. I had somebody text me while we're here. I invited four people with my shirt at. All right. So we will be giving away prizes like pastors say, but the prizes will be doubled if you're here in person. All right? So if it's $25 gift card online, it'll be a $50 gift card in person. All right? So those are our two challenges. And just so you know, the, the topic for next week is toxic relationships. All right? The baggage of toxic relationships. All right, some of us can relate to that from the past, some, and it's just any kind of relationship because we often time think it's romantic relationships that are toxic. No, it's any relationship that, that's not beneficial or that's causing you to not be who, you, who God wants you to be. All right, so uh, with that being said, let us pray, and we will close out tonight. And again, we have our prayer room. Uh, if you feel that you want intercessory prayer, uh, just hold, hold around for a little bit, and we will provide that for you, all right? Father God in heaven, we want to thank you for allowing us to come here tonight, Lord, and to tune in online to, to hear such a powerful word on unforgiveness, Father. I pray that if any of us are carrying unforgiveness in our hearts, that you would give us the strength and the courage, because in some cases it, it does take courage for us to forgive those that have wronged us. 
Father, I pray that we, we find somewhere in our heart to forgive that person so that we ourselves can be free. Because, again, it's not necessarily for them that the forgiveness is for. Sometimes, and in many cases, it's to help us be free, help us be unshackled from that pain that is holding us back. Father, I thank you and I pray that you bless us as we go uh, to our separate destinations and that you bring us back next week, 7.30 p.m. on the dot to hear another powerful message on toxic relationships. Thank you. And uh, Father, we, we, we just praise and that also we ask that you bring us back tomorrow morning for our Sabbath worship service and that you allow that to be even more of a blessing. In your holy son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you and good night.